It's a grisly job, but it takes a post-mortem to reveal the threats to marine life from things like ocean plastic. It's like real life CSI, but for sea life. And on the slab here at the Zoological Society of London is a harbour porpoise. It's come here through the Cetacean Stranding Investigations programme that's been running for more than 30 years. This porpoise, the UK's smallest and arguably cutest marine mammal, washed up dead in West Wales. It's quite a difficult watch seeing an animal as beautiful as a harbour porpoise so far from its natural element laid out on a slab about to be cut into and it's, it's pretty smelly as well to be honest. But it's really important work because without doing necropsies, without post-mortems on animals like this, it's very difficult for scientists to gather hard data on how they live, but more importantly, how these animals die. Each animal is different. Each animal can reveal something completely unique. And I think that's the interest and excitement behind it. The end point of this is we're trying to learn more about the threats they face. Often it's drowning after being dragged into a trawler's net, blunt force trauma from the hull of a speedboat, but occasionally the insidious and increasingly abundant marine hazard, plastic pollution. This tangle of plastic fishing gear was found around the tail fins of a starved, stranded minke whale. It had cut into its flesh, leaving it unable to dive four kilos of rope, killing a ten-ton whale. But it's the more subtle impact of plastic fragments that concerns scientists more, Necropsy samples have confirmed microplastics in nearly every animal they study. When it comes to ocean plastics, this difficult and, let's be honest, pretty gruesome work has never been more crucial because this week delegates are heading to Geneva to try and negotiate a global plastics treaty, putting a stop to the overuse of plastics, but also, crucially, trying to bring an end to the continued use of our oceans as a dumping ground for plastics. An ambitious treaty has to start at the production end of plastic. Plastic, when it gets in the ocean, when you're looking down the line, is almost impossible to deal with. If you're thinking about something like an, a microplastic or a nanoplastic, the same size as smaller than a plankton, how can you possibly clean that up out of the ocean? This work shows scientists are only beginning to understand the damage already done by plastic that may persist for centuries. That fact alone should persuade the world to change its ways.